with the team bouncing through time trying to preserve the world as we know it, a quick stop in the 1950s opens the door for a whole lot of nods to former companion series Agent Carter. Oh, and also the team is also mistaken for alien commies, but, you know, that's just a normal day in the life of the Agents of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, but I, I was really excited for this episode because of the Agent Carter crossover that we kind of had here. Um, and... And in fact, last week, as soon as I saw the preview for this week's episode, when I found out that Daniel Souza was going to be in this episode, and I knew that he was in Agent Carter, I knew that I had to watch Agent Carter, because I hadn't seen it before at all. So I made it my mission to, in one week, watch both seasons, the whole series of Agent Carter, so I could get caught up. And I did exactly that. And I have to say, I loved it. I love Agent Carter. It's a great show. And I may even do a review on it on this channel, if I can find the time. But I loved it, and now I'm caught up with the characters. And I was really excited to see Daniel Souza in this in this episode, and see how he's changed since the series finale of Agent Carter. But just a quick spoiler warning here before I get into anything too, you know, spoilery. Uh, so spoilers for Alien Commies from the Future, the latest episode of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So we start off with the team. They're being dropped into the mid-1950s at the height of the space race and in the desert near Area 51. Made for a classic story that I think really felt like vintage S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, the first couple of episodes of the show's final season have had to do a bit of narrative heavy lifting to get all the pieces back on the board. And, you know, they were good episodes. Um, but this was arguably the first episode that really felt like fun and in that marvel way that the series is pioneered at this point. Um, so I just really love this episode, and it's definitely my favorite episode so far. And Coulson, I just love Coulson, because he's positively giddy to get to play around in the 1950s and cooks up the perfect cover to have the team infiltrate the nearby S.H.I.E.L.D. base being targeted by the Chronicoms. And it actually turns out that their play in this time period is to overcharge an existing piece of experimental tech at the base and essentially nuke the facility. So, with most of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s brain trust caught up in the explosion, that's that's their plan. And the move would have effectively effectively crippled the agency in in its early days and would apparently be dramatic uh dramatic enough to cause the agency to fizzle out before it could grow to become a threat to the chronicoms in the future so to figure all of that out colson and simmons go undercover as agents of that era with colson assuming the identity of a dod analyst while simmons of course puts on her british accent to good puts her good her British accent to good use and assumes the identity of Agent Peggy Carter, which was really awesome. And she actually does look a lot like Peggy Carter, so it was really interesting. Um, and, you know, it kind of worked. It was, like, working pretty well, and they were all interviewing all the scientists and visitors to the base to try and determine who's a human and who's a chronicom. Um, but then Agent Daniel Souza showed up, and that's where things started to fall apart. And as fellow fans of Agent Carter of the Agent Carter series are well aware, Souza was Peggy's partner, partner and romantic partner for a time um, during that show. So he definitely notices that Simmons is not the Peggy he was expecting. Although when we first saw Souza show up, and then he ran into Simmons and. He was like, oh, Agent Peggy Carter, I'm glad to meet you. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. And I was, like, super confused by that. And I was like, oh, my God, are they officially tying this into the MCU? Are they tying this into Avengers Endgame? Because when Captain America Steve Rogers went back in time and stayed with Agent Carter, maybe history was rewritten so that Peggy never met Daniel and she just lived on her life with Steve. But then at the same time, that kind of wouldn't make sense with the whole time travel rules because then it would make a whole different reality. Uh, but then after the commercials were over and, and the show came back, that's when we found out he was just putting on an act and he caught them red-handed, basically. So Sousa arrests them, leading Daisy to go in posing as the CIA agent to recover them. But everything goes haywire when the Chronicoms make their move to try and blow up the base. Meanwhile, though, Mick... I mean, Mac, May, Yo-Yo, and Deke try to interrogate the DOD analyst that Coulson is posing as, though he assumes they're communists and don't give up any intel. 
but then later on, May and Yo-Yo infiltrate the base, posing as female test pilots to search for the Chronicoms, but then that ends up le leading to the eventual face-off at the device they're attempting to detonate, codenamed Helios. So, very cool name. Helios. Plus, it's just fun to say. Helios. So, we get plenty of good battles here between Coulson and a Chronicom and May and Yo-Yo teaming up against another Chronicom, though Simmons really saves the day by repurposing an early EMP to knock out the bomb and Chronicoms all in one shot. Unfortunately, along with LMD Coulson, so oops. Um, but the writers really continue to have a, a good handling of addressing issues uh, of like race and sexism as they would have existed in these eras and that's the thing I like about this this season so far with the time traveling is that it's so accurate to the time period it, like it really is um, like uh, for example the the bathroom at the diner is segregated um, with Daisy noting that despite the idealism of the era there's still not much progress there that's been made um, then later, Mac, Yo-Yo, and May turn to Deke for interrogating their prisoner because he might actually talk to the only white guy on the team there, considering the era. Um, and I, I think it was really funny when May walked back out and she was like, he called me Oriental. <laughs> like, that. that's just the kind of thing that would happen in that time period. So, yeah, um... Um, but, you know, back to the plan with sending Deacon. I mean, it kind of works, um, but it it's also a, a testament to just how diverse this cast is that they've built over the years on this series. So it, it's really impressive, and I like that, um, that they can really show that off in this kind of way. And we learn a lot more about the time-hopping aspect of how the Zephyr is traveling, and it's a bit more hodgepodge than Simmons made it sound from the jump, but... Basically, they're just drifting the time wake created by the Chronicoms each jump. So the team has no clue where they're heading each jump or what the target really is for the Chronicoms, which means they'll basically start off a step behind them every jump. And it's like every time they go to a new time period, they just have to start start from scratch and just start over and try and figure out the Chronicoms' new plan. But the fun stuff was also flying fast and furious this week because we got some jokes from Simmons and Daisy as they keep forgetting how strong LMD Coulson is now, which I have to admit is really cool. It's really cool seeing LMD Coulson because he's like so powerful. Um, but then we also have Deke and Mac falling into alien abduction cliches to keep their cover. That was really funny. But then best of all is... Coulson trying out the uh, Voight camp test from Blade Runner to try and ID uh, Chronicom, but in, instead he just makes an old lady cry, so that, that that's not too good. But but where Coulson does shine is his fight with the Chronicom, because it did feel like something straight out of a Terminator movie. I mean, you could really feel the weight and power they were throwing around, so I mean, just, just great, work, great work there. Um, now, having... Daniel Souza back was also a treat and a great bookend for that character um, to get to see him in the MCU. Uh, but he is in the, the next episode as well. Um, and it's nice to see that he's still smart and, as Daisy learns, is actually investigating Hydra's infiltration of S.H.I.E.L.D. all those years ago. And seeing him play with Simmons once he knows she's not actually Peggy was a great scene and just goes to show how clever and cool under pressure Souza has become after his time on Agent Carter. But speaking of his time on Agent Carter, what happened to him and Peggy? Because, I mean, just a quick spoiler alert here for Agents of uh, Agent Carter for the finale of the series, also the finale of season two. Uh, the last scene with him was him and Peggy kissing. So they basically got together. But in this, they mentioned that Daniel is the ex-partner or former partner of Peggy. So does that mean they broke up or something, or does this tie into the Captain America Endgame thing? I'm not really sure, but I mean, I guess we can basically just take this as a confirmation that he is no longer with Peggy. So Daniel Souza's got to find some other girl to be with. Maybe you can go back to Violet. I mean, if you haven't seen Agent Carter, then obviously you don't know who that is. But if you do, then you know what I'm talking about. 
But also in this episode, May is clearly dealing with some P- PTSD from her near death last season, uh, which manifests with a panic attack in the middle of the mission this week. And tackling that kind of story with a character like this is a really brave one, since we rarely get to see that kind of emotion from the cavalry. And Yo Yo is also dealing with some lingering fallout from last season, as her speed powers still aren't working. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe they are working, she just can't do it. She just doesn't have the energy or she has a fear to use them. Uh, (coughs) Excuse me, but um, yeah, so the episode ends with the light literally going out of Coulson's eyes after the EMP goes off. Um, So, I mean, here's hoping Simmons designed him with a restart function and uh, backup, hopefully. Um, I mean, if she didn't, then uh uh-oh. Because then that means no more Coulson. Um, But I'm sure they'll bring him back. They'll get him back to working again. And in the the next episode, it's going to be really interesting. It looks like it's going to be a great episode. Because Daniel Souza is back once again. But it seems that the the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are are investigating his murder. So apparently, he gets murdered. And then it's this big thing in history. Or at least in S.H.I.E.L.D. history. And he died a hero. And they're going to have to contemplate whether they save him or just let him die. So it'll be really interesting to see how he dies, who murders him, and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this. But what did you guys think about this episode? Please let me know all your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. What was your favorite part of the episode? And what do you think will happen in the next episode and the rest of this final season of Marvel's Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to drop a like and hit the subscribe button so that I can keep you up to date on everything that goes on in the Marvel life.